thank you uh, very much for joining us here this afternoon. Um, I would like to start by just noting that um, to date we've administered 1.8 million uh, vaccination doses. Um, when I checked the report this morning, we're at 999,800 um, who have received at least one dose. So we should be over the 1 million mark in terms of um, our residents um, starting the vaccination process. That's 70.3%. Um, and to date, <clears throat> 881,000 of our um, residents have gotten fully vaccinated. That's 62% of the, the po population. Um, I do think there has been new stories of concern uh, about um, the hospitals and ICUs uh, filling up. And um, yes, in fact, we are seeing more COVID patients in our hospitals uh, and the ICUs are filling up. And so uh, as you're aware, uh, the city and county had announced this morning that they would be canceling all events um, over 10 indoors and 25 outdoors. Um, we fully support uh, that action. We know that we need to take action now in order to reduce the spread of COVID and ensure that our hospitals are not overrun. Um, we are increasing our efforts to provide testing across the state. Um, we do know that uh, testing is helping us identify those who are sick, um, but um, we do know that these actions will take time to make an impact on the COVID um, cases that we're seeing. It will take um, six to seven weeks uh, in order for us to um, see significant change in the number of cases. Um, so I ask everyone to do your part. Um, we know what's necessary in order for us to reduce the spread of COVID here in our state. Um, it is about wearing our masks, um, wash, washing our hands and, and using hand sanitizer, uh, getting vaccinated. That's the most important uh, thing that anyone can do uh, to help us get back to normal. Um, I would like to note that um, Pfizer was granted full approval by the FDA this morning. Um, I know that um, several had told me that they would not get vaccinated until the vaccine was fully approved. Um, we know that the vaccines continue to be uh, very effective uh, against the Delta variant and other variants that um, have become uh, of interest here in the state of Hawaii, as well as across the country. We know that the vaccines are effective at preventing death and severe, so severe illness. Uh, including hospitalizations. Uh, but we do know what action is um, successful in reducing the spread of COVID-19. It's maintaining physical distancing, uh, six feet from um, everyone. If you are sick, stay home. Uh, even if you become mildly symptomatic, or if you've had a close contact with someone that was positive, uh, you need to isolate and stay away from others. Wear your mask indoors, and I wear my mask outdoors as well, as long as I believe that there'll be um, a crowd and I won't be able to maintain physical distancing of six feet. Uh, and I certainly encourage everyone to avoid large gatherings. I, I applaud the action taken by the city and county uh, to restrict all gatherings over uh, 10 indoors and 25 outdoors. Uh, we definitely need to uh, take action to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Um, it is a risky time to be traveling right now. I, I did ask everyone, residents and visitors alike, uh, to reduce travel to Hawaii to essential business activities only. Uh, we do know that um, it uh, is not a good time uh, to travel to the islands. Uh, restaurant capacity has been restricted. Um, there is limited access to rental cars. Uh, and we know that the visitors who um, choose to come to the islands will not have the typical kind of um, holiday that they expect to get when they visit Hawaii. 
So once again, I encourage uh, everyone to restrict uh, and curtail travel to Hawaii. Uh, residents and visitors alike, it's not a good time uh, to travel to the islands. Um, we all know the actions that's necessary to reduce the spread of COVID. It's about wearing your mask indoors and outdoors if you can't maintain physical distance, staying home when you're sick, washing your hands and using hand sanitizer, uh, and especially uh, avoiding large gatherings and crowds. If we all can take these actions for the next four weeks, uh, we can bend the curve of COVID-19 here in the state of Hawaii. Thank you very much, Governor. We'll open it up to questions from the media. Please, uh, reporters, raise your virtual hands and we'll call on you. If you have a follow-up to your initial question, please raise your hand again so I know uh, not to mute you and move on. Uh, we'll start with Dan Nicasso, Star Advertiser. Go ahead, Dan. Thank you, Jody. My question's for Governor Ige. Um, I'll ask it as he approaches. Um, you said on Spotlight Hawaii this morning that uh, you hope people heed your request to curtail travel through the end of October, which of course you know is the um, sort of the end of our sh shoulder season or traditional slowdown in the economy. How concerned are you that um, if people heed that, especially visitors, that might push some small businesses um, to go belly up as well as hurt? No, I now, I, I am certainly aware that uh, many of our businesses are currently um, struggling. Uh, I do know that when we reimpose the restriction on restaurants to 50% of capacity, I heard from uh, many restaurants about the challenges uh, that that would present. Uh, and certainly um, our call to uh, reduce travel to the islands to only essential businesses uh, will have an impact on uh, the numbers who have come here. Uh, but I also would like to point out that our hospitals are at capacity. Our um, ICUs are full. We are uh, working on surge plans at every facility to expand capacity. Uh, we're uh, transitioning acute care beds to be able to support those who are, are sick. Uh, and so I, I do know that that's a risk, but I believe that as a community, that's a risk uh, we have to take to discourage travel to the islands uh, until we can get to a better place with our healthcare facilities. Thank you, Governor. Wendy Osher, Maui now. Go ahead, Wendy. Hi, Governor. Other than Honolulu, are you considering mitigation requests from outer island mayors, specifically for Maui County? Uh, yes, I did have a d discussion with uh, Mayor Victorino this morning and we'll be um, uh, re-engaging uh, this afternoon. I uh, have been talking with uh, Hawaii Island and Kauai as well. Um, certainly, we are all concerned with uh, the surging cases uh, and have been monitoring hospital capacity um, all across the state. Um, so I will be looking at um, Mayor Victorino's request about um, further restrictions on Maui. All right, moving on to Daryl Huff, Hawaii News Now. Daryl. Uh, question for the governor. Um, with the formal approval of the Pfizer vaccine, um, can you get tougher with your employees about your vaccine or testing mandate? Uh, it seems like uh, many will be going to testing because it's being provided free. Um, and uh, with this new approval, can you actually make it mandatory? Are you considering that? Um, it's There's a couple of things, Daryl, and I should have a, a complete uh, assessment this afternoon um, from all the uh, departments and agencies. Uh, the data that I actually saw was very encouraging. Um, the, the rate of vaccination among state employees is high, higher than I thought it, uh, it would be uh, initially. So, you know, Daryl, I think um, all of us uh, really believe that public servants would choose uh, to get vaccinated. Uh, we've seen uh, public servants step up for the entire uh, pandemic um, and they have been willing uh, to go beyond the call 
in their duties, um, accepting responsibilities that are outside um, of their scope because they knew that it would help support our communities. Um, so uh, I'm encouraged. We'll have a much better assessment uh, by the end of the day today. Uh, but I do believe that um, we'll have a quite good uh, participation rate under the existing policies. Carol, did you have a follow-up? Yeah, can you be a little more specific, please, uh, uh, particularly when it comes to public safety workers, uh, prison guards, and teachers. Uh, can you give me just a, give us a general number as opposed to uh, of what you were able to say? A little bit more specific, maybe, if you could be. Well, I, there are the challenges. I don't have the, the complete picture, for, for example, on all the schools, but I have seen uh, some districts that um, the vaccination rate was higher than uh, the statewide average for sure. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't have anything other than spot information and I don't want to misspeak at this point. We will have a comprehensive report by the end of the day. All right, going on to Tom George, KITV. Tom? This question is for the governor. Also in light of the FDA approving the vaccine, uh, you know, we're hearing some municipalities across the country considering health passes or you know, having a way to require vaccination to get into public accommodations. Is that something that is uh, being considered here in Hawaii? Um, we have been um, encouraging uh, vaccinations, at least for the um, uh, very um, urgently uh, through a wide range of the incentive programs uh, for the last several months. Um, we will be looking at now that we have um, full use authorization from the FDA for the Pfizer uh, vaccine uh, about what further steps we can take. Um, we've had discussions about health pass. Uh, the current uh, tier system does recognize uh, businesses and encourages businesses uh, who are willing to have all of their customers vaccinated. Um, they have been they have been authorized to be able to uh, get to uh, higher densities, um, uh, and we continue to work with the industry, um, talking with the restaurant association and the re retail association, and the business community in general. Uh, I can tell you that there is concern as um, as virtually every business uh, is hiring people that they are having a trouble hiring the employees that they need. Um, many businesses have expressed a concern about uh, having additional mandates um, have an impact on their ability to hire employees uh, and, and to be able to serve the general public. Thank you, Governor. Jennifer Kelleher, Associated Press. Jen. Hi, Governor. Um, the Native Hawaiian community is being hit hard now with the number of cases and vaccine hesitancy. And a reason many give is the distress for government and Hawaii's history. Um, what is being done to improve vaccination rates among Hawaii's indigenous people? You know, we are uh, reaching out to uh, leaders and organizations active uh, amongst Native Hawaiians uh, and the indigenous um, groups. Uh, we do know that uh, sometimes um, my making statements uh, are not the most motivational uh, for many others. And so we are partnering with um, uh, Native Hawaiian organizations, as well as identifying um, leaders within those communities uh, who support vaccination and who can uh, speak out um, to encourage others to get vaccinated. You know, we've uh, done advertising with uh, Native Hawaiian doctors um, asking uh, and encouraging Native Hawaiians to get vaccinated, um, stressing the fact that the vaccinations have proven to be safe and effective. Um, and so we certainly are aware um, that um, Native Hawaiians are not getting vaccinated um, at the same rate as others in our community. Uh, and we are working very hard with community-based partners uh, to try to make vaccines more available, uh, to find different voices, uh, to encourage um, um, Native Hawaiians to get vaccinated. And, and certainly um, 
uh, we are open to any other organization um, that has ideas about how we can uh, do a better job of responding to the Native Hawaiian community, uh, getting the answers uh, to questions that they might have that um, promotes hesitancy. And I think uh, most importantly, you know, we are concerned and we are doing everything that we can think of uh, to reach this population. Thank you, Governor. Uh, going to Stuart Yurton, Civil Beep. Stuart. Uh, yes, thank you, Jody. Um, Governor Ige, you mentioned this morning that the airlines had, you had met with the airlines and they said that they would help amplify the message that this isn't the best time to come here. Um, which airlines did you talk to and did they express the concern that um, this would affect their business at a time when they're really just trying to bounce back? Uh, certainly, I am fully aware that all the airlines continue to struggle. Um, there was general um, understanding of what the healthcare situation is in our islands. Um, and certainly, there was an acknowledgement um, that it is a difficult time here in the state. Uh, and they did express um, support for helping uh, in, in the ways that they can uh, to, to deliver the message that it's not a good time to visit the islands. All right, moving on to, oh, Stuart, did you have a follow-up? Yeah, so follow-up. Um, it would seem like it would be pretty easy for airlines to, and hotels for that matter too, to raise fares to a point where um, only people who really had to travel uh, would travel. Was there any discussion about them uh, limiting the numbers of people by making fares so high that people wouldn't want to wouldn't want to come? I am uh, prohibited from talking about fares or scheduling with airlines. It would be an antitrust violation. So I did not talk specifically about fares or schedules or flights. Um, but um, spoke with them about the current situation here uh, for our healthcare system uh, and certainly um, uh, asked them to do whatever they could to help uh, reduce travel to the islands. All right, Nikki Shenfield, KHON2. Yes, Governor, if the hospitals are at capacity and the ICU beds are full, what is the trigger point? You would say something like a lockdown is necessary and how close are we to it? You know, we are um, initiating surge plans in every facility and Libby is here and she can talk to more specifically. Um, I think you've seen the, the tents that have um, popped up at the facilities and those are um, kind of extensions. They're um, tents that allow us to treat um, acute care patients that uh, may need less than ICU uh, support, but allows us to extend um, the personnel uh, in the hospitals to be able to put, take care of more people. So what is happening all across the state is that hospitals are looking at uh, regular acute care beds uh, and transitioning them uh, to be able to take ICU patients. Um, you know, there are other activities that are geared toward uh, creating more spaces for COVID positive patients within that hospital. Um, and we are working within uh, the existing physical structures uh, in the hospitals across the state uh, to expand capacity to serve more. And I'll stop there and let um, Dr. Char uh, give you more specifics about um, actions that we're taking uh, to ensure that we can provide uh, health care to all of those who need it. Thank you, Governor. Um, so just to commend the hospital system and our partners with the Healthcare Association of Hawaii, um, they have been doing an amazing job of all pitching in to help each other out. So it seems like we still have some capacity for medical surgical type beds um, in some of the facilities and the ICU beds are, are what, they're having more of a challenge with ICU beds. Um, this past weekend was really tight. And so I think it's a matter of trying to rebalance the healthcare system. And so several facilities stepped up to offload patients from another facility. And that's, that's where I think it's just commendable that the healthcare system is really, really working together 
to rebalance things so that all of them can provide really high quality care to the patients that they have in their facilities. Um, we are also very thankful that we got some surge staffing in today. And there was some that came in last week and went to Kona and Hilo. So today we've got a bunch more people in and that's gonna help tremendously to give a little bit of breathing room to all of the hospital facilities. So, you know, we're watching very carefully their conversations daily. Um, and again, it's just a real, real solid partnership between all of the healthcare systems, as well as the Healthcare Association of Hawaii. And we're very grateful for that. Thank you, Dr. Chara. Uh, Zoe Dam, Hawaii Public Radio, Zoe. Uh, this is a question for the governor. Go ahead. Um, what are some of the specific actions that will be taken to limit the number of travelers to Hawaii? Um, you know, we are um, going to be uh, requesting uh, all of our travel partners to um, communicate the fact that it's not a good time uh, to be traveling to the islands. Uh, we would note that we've added uh, restrictions to hospital, I mean, uh, to restaurants. So there are will be limited um, access to restaurants and other places to eat. Um, we continue to have a shortage of rental cars here. So, you know, we've um, asked the Hawaii Tourism Authority uh, to help us uh, inform um, those in the hospitality industry about what the current situation is. Uh, and um, we know that they will be uh, helping in the way that they can um, to um, curtail uh, travel to the islands. Right, Stephanie Salmond, Hawaii Tribune Herald. Stephanie? Hi, this is, I guess, either for the governor or Dr. Char. Um, what happens if or when we can't expand surge capacity at hospitals anymore, whether that's either because of space or staffing? What happens if we reach that point? Um, we do have uh, expansion or surge um, plans that uh, entail, for example, and we talked about it last year, about whether we would be able to retrofit a convention center or uh, other facility to be able to uh, service uh, additional patients. Um, the challenge that we will face at this point, um, when I checked the CDC site this morning, the entire country is lit up red as um, uh, extremely high uh, activity of COVID in every single state across the country. Uh, and lots of those um, surge plans that deal with establishing a field hospital or a facility uh, to expand capacity uh, relies on um, federal support uh, for doctors and medical professionals to help staff, staff that surge hospital. Uh, and uh, we don't believe that we would be in a position to get um, support uh, because every state um, is facing uh, the similar situation to what we're seeing right now. And I'll let uh, Dr. Char add. And we've been having a lot of discussions for several months now about the hospital capacity and surge capacity. Um, I'm reminded that for the past 10 Mondays, we've seen our numbers go up. So I think it was maybe June 21st or somewhere thereabouts, um, we were at like 14 cases and we have just steadily climbed since then. So really the question to me is, what are we doing to prevent us being in that situation where our hospitals are overrun and we're looking at further surge capacity? And, and that gets back to all of us. You know, what, what have you done to prepare? You know, in the past 10 days since, since we first floated that, um, we have been ramping up testing. We are trying to increase the capacity of our isolation quarantine facilities. You know, we're trying to onboard more people. We're trying to increase the capacity for the contact tracing and the case investigation. And it's been really tough because we just don't have that many more people on this island to help do those things. But, you know, what have we done? And I think that's where, you know, it's really commendable that the city and county has stepped up and they're, they're limiting the gathering size, because I think that'll help greatly. But, but we need to do the prevention side of things so that we never get to the, the treatment side or having, you know, 
surge capacity in hospitals. What are we doing? So we need to back down on our gatherings. We need to prevent ourselves or our loved ones from becoming another case and adding to that hospital load. We need to stay home. We need to wear our masks. We need to keep our distance. And I think we really need to reframe it like that. What are we doing to keep the hospitals from being overrun? Because it's our community, it's our hospitals, and it's up to us, and we can impact that. Thank you, Dr. Chair. Max Dybul, go ahead. Max Degaila now. Thank you. This is for the governor. Uh, Governor, this ties into uh, just what Dr. Char was just saying. Uh, your administration, the Department of Health, are asking the population of this state to stay home, to wear masks, to take responsibility. But on the front end of this pandemic, that was not what was done. It was uh, mandates from your office to lock down. And I, I don't want to say definitively, but we keep looking over the last several days, the last several weeks, numbers keep rising. It doesn't appear as though uh, the population of this state is responding as you would like them to. So it was mentioned uh, by a reporter earlier about lockdowns being on the table. That wasn't addressed specifically. I'm curious, are they on the table and uh, what, condi what conditions would demand them? Yeah, so I know that that question has been asked before and it's difficult to give you specific conditions that would trigger a lockdown. But yes, is a lockdown on the table uh, yes, it would be if the if the number of cases continues to grow exponentially as it has in the last 10 weeks, as Dr. Char had said, then we will have to take action to um, to limit and ensure that the hospitals are not overwhelmed. Uh, and I don't have a specific number, uh, but certainly we're in contact with the hospitals every single day about their current situation, about the number of patients they are seeing, and about their capacity to continue to serve our community with quality healthcare. All right, uh, Melissa Tanji, Maui News. Hi, this message is, um, this question is for Dr. Char. Dr. Char, um, do you think today's FDA approval of the Pfizer, the full approval of the Pfizer vaccine will actually help here in Hawaii? And uh, maybe what percentage or number of the unvaccinated population you think would, you know, be, be receptive to this news and, and get vaccinated? I sure hope it will help. Um, you know, a lot of the reasons when we ask people who haven't been fully vaccinated why, um, a lot of them are saying, well, you know, was, they, they thought it was a little too soon or they didn't have enough confidence, they were worried, or, you know, even some claims that the vaccine was, was um, um, experimental, which we know absolutely was not. Um, so I, I'm really hopeful that for those people, this will make a difference for them. Um, and I just would remind everybody, you know, this is the most studied, scrutinized, tracked vaccine in the history of mankind. Um, we know it's safe, we know it works, it keeps people from severe illness, from hospitalization, from death. I mean, we know it works. So maybe this full FDA approval for those 16 and older will be enough um, to, to take those people who are hesitant and, and make them feel comfortable enough to go and get vaccinated. Thank you, Dr. Shah. Uh, go ahead, Dan Nicasso, Star Advertiser. Thanks, Jody. Uh, I wanted to follow up on Melissa's question to Dr. Char to ask the same of Governor Ige. As you know, there's no shortage of conspiracies online about what's in the vaccine. You and Mayor Blangiari and other elected officials have been told repeatedly that's the lack of FDA approval, that's the hesitancy. How optimistic, or on the other hand, how pessimistic are you that that was just a red herring for people not to get vaccinated and, and that because of the FDA approval today, suddenly those numbers of vaccinated people will jump significantly beyond the 70% level? Um, just a couple of things. And, you know, on the White House calls that we've been having on a weekly basis, uh, they have provided uh, survey data that they're doing um, across the country. Um, and um, they reported that um, of those who said that they are not vaccinated, uh, that, um, 70 to 80% of those who are unvaccinated uh, had a reason for not being uh, vaccinated. Uh, and I do recall when we look at the numbers, um, 
the fact that there wasn't um, full use authorization and the fact that it was an emergency use authorization uh, only was one of the higher reasons given for those who um, are not vaccinated. So we don't have specific numbers for here uh, in Hawaii, uh, but we have heard that um, when those who are unvaccinated are asked about why they're not vaccinated, a good number are saying it's because it's um, emergency use authorization only uh, and that um, they would be waiting for a full use authorization. Uh, so, you know, I guess we'll, we'll remain, um, we'll be watching carefully about what an impact it has. Um, you know, as, as we've said, we do believe that for state workers, um, we hope to see a, a high compliance with the vaccination uh, mandate. Um, and certainly um, with this announcement, we'll see how many who have chosen to wait um, will decide to get vaccinated now. Um, Daryl Huff, Agent M. Go ahead, Daryl. Thank you. Um, for, for Dr. Char and, and also for the governor, what you folks are describing is a very uh, critical situation when it comes to the hospitals. Um, if they're operating at 110 or 120 percent now and they have no ICU beds now, um, how much longer is it until you define it as being out of control uh, or, out, uh, or, or, or the crisis level to which a, a lockdown would be necessary to respond? Um, if you don't have surge capability, how, how, how many more people can you take into a, the hospitals before you have to say nobody can go outside anymore? Yeah, you know, certainly, Daryl, it might sound like it's a simple uh, calculation, but it is um, very complex. As Dr. Char had mentioned, you know, uh, one of the, the triggers for um, Queens West uh, saying that they were overwhelmed uh, was uh, because um, many patients showed up uh, at Queens West um, and there was still sufficient capacity uh, at other hospitals uh, around the state, on, especially on Oahu. So, um, you know, we are working. Uh, yes, we are very much concerned with the continuing high um, case numbers that we're seeing. Um, we know that our hospitals are uh, working very hard um, to uh, be able to treat everyone. I wish I could tell you that there's a specific magic number uh, at which point we will uh, look at um, a lockdown, but there isn't. Um, it really is about uh, working with the healthcare system, uh, taking the actions that we can to um, be able to expand uh, services and capacity. Um, and then uh, at the point that we feel that we don't have any other um, resources to expand capacity, then certainly we will uh, have to look at more drastic action. Okay. It looks like Daryl has a follow-up. Daryl? I guess what I'm concerned about is that you have, you're making statements to encourage the public to do this or that, um, to encourage businesses to do this or that, but you're not making them do this or that. You know, for example, the businesses that we spoke with last week said they need a government mandate in order to do vaccine uh, health passes because one business doing it and another one does it and it's not fair and, and, and they run into all kinds of conflicts. They need the government to sort of back them up. Same thing being true of vaccine requirements for employees and public service businesses. You keep saying, oh, this is a really good idea. It's a really, really good idea. They're saying we need your help to do it. When are you going to get to the point where you actually tell businesses to do these things in order to keep us safe? Well, and I think that that's the balancing act, Daryl. For uh, every business that encourages me to mandate it, there are other businesses who tell me that they're uh, on the brink of uh, closure uh, and the mandate would push them over the edge. Uh, so certainly it is about uh, trying to find the right balance. 
uh, we do recognize that mandates uh, impacts many in our community. Uh, and to the extent that we can encourage action, um, you know, that would be preferable. Um, but we are prepared to mandate action if necessary um, when we get to the breaking point. Okay, Jennifer Kelleher, Associated Press. Go ahead, Jennifer. Thanks. Hi, Governor. Um, it really seems like nothing so far has discouraged visitors from coming or residents from traveling during a pandemic other than strict travel restrictions and quarantine measures. And even when we had those in place, people were, were still coming and getting arrested for violating rules. What can you say to those who say there needs to be more done than simply asking people to limit travel to essential purposes? Well, um, you know, last year in March, when we when I first asked for uh, visitors to postpone travel to uh, the islands, we saw a 60 a uh, percent reduction in the traffic um, to Hawaii. Uh, and then certainly ordering the mandatory quarantine uh, of all incoming visitors uh, reduced travel to the islands by 99.5%, essentially uh, 100% of travelers. Uh, the, the situation that we are in today is uh, different um, with the availability of vaccines uh, and uh, here in the islands with 62% of our community being fully vaccinated and all across the country, um, a, a good number of people are fully vaccinated. Uh, and the CDC guidance uh, is about fully vaccinated individuals being able to travel domestically. I, I think that that's uh, the different situation that we currently are in. Um, you know, we have been monitoring uh, travel to the islands. Uh, and we do see a reduction uh, in uh, travel to the islands of about 14% already. You know, we are, are hoping to see a larger reduction uh, in travel to the islands uh, as we um, proceed uh, during this time. Thank you very much, Governor. Uh, Tom George, KITV4, Tom. Uh, Governor, you know, one of the initial incentives just as a community to get vaccinated was you set this 70% target. Um, is that still in place right now or has the Delta variant um, changed that? And, and, if, and is that something that if that does change might discourage people from getting vaccinated? Certainly with the Delta variant and the fact that it is um, more transmissible, um, that does change the dynamic and the target at which um, point we would arrive at herd immunity. Um, you know, we continue to encourage everybody to get vaccinated because that's um, the best way to get out of the current situation. We haven't set a new target on um, vaccinations at this point in time. Um, you know, we um, are monitoring and with um, the surge in the cases, um, it's certainly obvious that we are far from herd immunity uh, today. Uh, the virus is actively being spread in our community um, all across the state. Uh, and so, you know, what that new target um, would be, I think, is um, at least several weeks away before we can assess where we are uh, and make a determination about at what point and at what level of vaccinations um, we would um, achieve herd immunity and see the number of cases uh, be stable. Tom, did you have a follow-up? Uh, yes, I did. Um, also, just in terms of travel, I mean, in, at your last press conference, you said, you know, it was only one, one to two percent of all cases were from actual visitors. You know, in announcing this today, do you feel like we are maybe under under reporting that? or um, where, do, where do things stand in terms of um, uh, visitors versus locals as, as the cause of new, new cases? We, we've actually seen in the last week a reduction in the number of cases that are due to travel, travel-related uh, visitors as well as um, residents. So uh, certainly it seems like less residents are traveling right now, which is, I think, a good thing. Um, but, you know, those numbers change all the time, and we continue to monitor them. Monitor them. Uh, we do uh, believe that um, the number of cases 
uh, due to visitors uh, remains low, uh, but we uh, are recognizing that um, the high level of virus activity in our community, um, we just want to encourage um, everyone to defer travel to the islands, uh, except for essential businesses. Uh, we do believe that that would uh, be best for our community right at this point in time. Uh, we, we know that that will have an impact on uh, economic recovery, uh, but the health condition of our community uh, requires us to take action. And I think Dr. Char is going to add. Thank you. So one of the issues with the travel related um, infections is it's a percentage of the total number of cases. So as we see our total number of cases skyrocket, even though the number, absolute number of visitors and, and travel related infections goes up as a percentage of the total number of cases, it's relatively diminished. So I think it, we're, we're seeing you know, single digits on travel related cases, but that's the percentage. And, and we know that our overall numbers are so high, it's kind of dwarfing that. And all that really tells us is that Yes, we have cases related to travel. The vast majority of our cases right now are related to community transmission, just widespread community transmission. So really that's where we need to be focusing a lot of our energy. Thank you, Dr. Char. Stuart Yurton, Civil Beat. Stuart. Yes, uh, thank you, Jody. Uh, yes, this is for Dr. Char. Um, another question uh, related to um, uh, vaccinations and the current surge. Uh, Dr. Char, do you see um, any evidence that this recent spike in cases has made people more um, likely or encouraged people to get vaccines? Um, are you seeing more, yeah, any, any evidence that people are getting vaccinated because of the current uh, surge? Yeah, thankfully we are seeing a little bit of a bump in our numbers in terms of the number of um, vaccine doses administered. Um, we started seeing that, I guess it was it's been several weeks now, once we started hitting the 160 a day kind of case numbers, we saw a small bump and it seems like it's accelerated a little bit more. So we are back to, I think, roughly in the 20,000 doses per week range. Um, and so we hope that that's sustained because we really would like for everybody to get vaccinated in order to create a safer community for all of us. Thank you, Dr. Char. Stephanie Salmons, go ahead. Hawaii Tribune Herald. Hi, uh, this is for the governor. Um, I was wondering if you have approved the most recent emergency rule and um, restrictions that have been proposed by Mayor Roth here on the Big Island. And do you think that those go far enough to curb the spread here? Um, I haven't been able to uh, complete the review of the request from uh, Mayor Roth. And so I know he's, um, he's asked in uh, our meeting this morning that we uh, try and approve it uh, today, and we are working to complete that review. Okay, thank you very much, Governor. Um, Stuart, I need to apologize. I think you had a follow-up and I bypassed you. Go ahead. Stuart? Yeah, sorry. This was, um, again, for Dr. Char. Um, is there any... Um, any way to quantify or any sense of uh, how many uh, or how much the approval of the Pfizer vaccine um, could increase people's desire to get, get vaccinated. I know Governor Ige talked a little bit about uh, some, some information that, that it is a reason, the, the um, emergency use um, authorization is a reason that people are are reluctant, um, but is there any? Are there any numbers? Do you know how much this could move the needle? I really don't. I don't know how many more people will get vaccinated. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that it's a lot, but I don't. I don't know the number. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dr. Chur. Yeah, Mikaso, Star Advertiser, Round Three. Go ahead. Thanks, Jody. A question for Governor. Um, given the fluid situation and the increasing concerns. Are you considering the eviction moratorium that's scheduled to be lifted? Um, is that an issue that might be put back in play given all that's going on? 
Um, you know, we are uh, implementing the new um, laws uh, concerning evictions that the legislature passed this session. Uh, you know, the desire or the requirement that uh, mediation occur um, it's, I think, a powerful tool to reduce the number of evictions. Um, we, we believe that it's best to proceed uh, with um, uh, ending the moratorium. It does, um, we've heard from both landlords um, and tenants um, about uh, the concerns about evictions, but also about um, the need to really um, move forward because um, some of the landlords uh, really are unable to make um, decisions about their properties uh, until the moratorium ends. Uh, so uh, we know that the rental relief programs on all of the counties uh, have been very active. Um, they've uh, accepted many applications. Now we meet with them on a regular basis every week to find out status on the distribution of rent relief funds. Um, we are asking and encouraging both landlords and tenants who are behind in rent uh, to apply for rental assistance. Um, I would like to remind people that the rental assistance program also uh, allows you to uh, request for future rent um, assistance uh, not only for um, those payments that um, someone is behind, um, but also those that uh, they may be struggling to pay uh, throughout the end of the year. So, you know, we believe that uh, ending the moratorium um, is a step forward to uh, getting back to normal in our rental markets. Uh, we, we believe that the rental assistance funds um, hopefully can uh, help uh, bridge the gap between uh, landlords and tenants uh, and support um, landlords um, in keeping tenants in place and not having to evict them. Okay. Thank you, well, are you okay, Dan? Yes, thank you, Governor. Daryl Huff, H&N. Hi, this is for Dr. Char. Um, you know, we've become aware that the testing that's being offered at the stadium, and I think at a number of the other free states, uh, free sites, uh, are often antigen tests. And I had one expert tell me today that if state workers are being allowed to use an antigen test to satisfy your requirement that they be exempt from vaccines, that the antigen test will not be effective in keeping the virus out of your workplaces because you take a, you need to take an antigen test every few days, not once a week or once every two weeks. Do you agree with that as an assessment? And what is your feeling about the effectiveness of antigen testing for the general public uh, being used in this way? I think what we need to remember about tests are that they are tools. So there's no one right tool for everything, and it really depends on how it's used. Um, and it's also a balancing act in terms of the the logistics of it and the feasibility. Um, certainly with antigen test, if you can test somebody every other day, you know, three times a week, that's probably a, a better test and a better result than testing somebody once. Um, but also if people are symptomatic and you get an antigen test, you're done. You don't need to go on to do, you know, PCR on them necessarily. You can assume that that person has COVID. So it really depends on the setting in which it's done. I think primarily the testing at the stadium was set up so that people who were exposed or who were having symptoms could get tested. Um, and it's better than not having any testing or having to go and, you know, go to a physician or a healthcare provider and, and get a prescription or, you know, go get a lab test ordered by them. Um, so we're just trying to make testing as widespread and as available as we can for as many people as we can to try and answer those questions. We are seeing, you know, a fair amount of tests being done and we're seeing a, a fair amount of test positivity. So I think the answer is that it's not the perfect test and maybe, you know, you could, you could tweak it a bit, but for what we're trying to accomplish and the number of people that we're dealing with and the rapidity of the results, because that's the other thing, we want the results right away. So, you know, before you leave, whether or not you're, you tested positive. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that we're using the point of care antigen testing at the community sites. Some of them were using PCR tests. It just depends. Thank you, Dr. Chair. So, you're, so 
Go ahead, Tom George, PITV4. Yeah, just just to clarify for the governor about about the health passes. I mean, you mentioned businesses and their ability to hire, but you know, more so for for customers and people feeling safe to go out. I mean, if you did mandate that, it would be an even playing field essentially. So, and and there are proposals on the table right now. I know the the speaker of the house, uh, Psyche, had had mentioned uh, that he was calling on you to do that. Is that something that you would consider of the plans that are out there? Yeah, certainly we are uh, considering the health passes. You know, we're working through um, the technical details about how we would implement. We are also looking at um, how uh, the um, health passes have been uh, implemented in other jurisdictions, um, other cities that have ordered it. Um, there is no state uh, that I believe has mandated um, the health pass. I know that um, several states have um, allowed it to be a voluntary activity. Uh, and so we are looking at all of those states, uh, looking at uh, which um, businesses and industries are involved in the mandate, um, what alternatives uh, to vaccination are, are provided and supported. Um, and then we continue to talk to uh, businesses here uh, in the islands to get an assessment of what the mandate what uh, impact the mandate would have on their businesses. I just really wanted uh, to thank uh, everyone and remind everyone that um, we do know what we need to do in order to help slow the spread of COVID-19 in our community. Uh, it is about staying home when we're sick and keeping our children home when they, they, they become sick. It's wearing our mask uh, indoors, and certainly I would encourage you to wear a mask outdoors if you'll be going uh, into uh, a crowded location or to where you can't maintain physical distance. Uh, wash your hands and use hand sanitizer as that helps to slow the spread of uh, COVID-19. Uh, and I think most importantly, encourage everyone to get vaccinated. Uh, getting vaccinated is the most effective way that we can manage the spread of COVID-19 and get back to normal. Thank you.